Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 11, Thoughts. This episode is called Bouncing Back. So, another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this season. No spoilers in this video for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. So, we open in Bogota. And, yeah, very, very cool kind of... The, the attack that takes the the weapons, this thing of, you know, the, they, let's see, they break the glass in the car, they take the guns from the, yeah, just, you know, very nicely, you know, yeah. Um, let's see, and, yeah, so Coulson is meeting with the, the president who points out, you know, Fox News is shouting about us. Which, I mean, it's kind of what Fox News does. You know, they, they're always screaming about something that either isn't actually a problem or they're, you know, blaming it on someone that isn't to blame for it or suggesting a solution that absolutely wouldn't work. You know, Fox News, if it hurts someone that they don't like, maybe even kills them, they're in favor of it. If not... Yeah, they're going to try to find some way to, to get someone tortured or killed over it. Let's see. They're, they're not going to necessarily get their own hands dirty, but they're going to do it through stochastic terrorism. And then we have the... Let's see. Yeah, uh, so we... the Yeah, the president says that the ATCU is going to keep operating and they're going to be the the government agency that deals with inhumans but they're going to work under the the agency of shield which on paper still doesn't exist i have a feeling it might still the the president literally might have said of course i'm reauthorizing you if not for the fact that the movies, at least at this time, did not want to for S.H.I.E.L.D. to still exist. And, yeah, you know, they're, they've pretty much they've finished the conversation. The president was walking away from, from Coulson, and Coulson's like, one last thing, and the president starts on, yes, Columbo? And... Let's see. Yeah, you know, the, the president does, you know, acknowledge to, to Coulson, you know, I am I'm aware of your your sacrifices. You know, that goat you slaughtered last week, holy crap, just top marks. And I like the point about, you know, powers are the new normal. And <laughs> You two deserve each other. Yeah, seriously. Mac calling him as he sees him. He's he's not always right, but yeah. Like they're talking about ah, you know, to be invisible or be able to see I, I guess it's ma mainly like Hunter is you know I have a I have a feeling I can tell what it is Hunter would like to do with invisibility, and spe especially once he mentions if not invisibility, maybe, like, x-ray vision, like, okay, dude, we get it, you want to spy on people against their will, like, it's just super creepy. I guess all the Bobby is really saying is that she, you know, considered trying to take one of the fish pills to, to get the, uh, what's it called, to see if she would develop powers, but, yeah. Let's see, then we have the... Yeah, we see just how fast, you know, the, the, um, I, I guess, okay, for now I'll call her Elena, just how fast she moves, and, yeah, the, you know, Lincoln points out the powers aren't random, you know, they, they are supposed to, which I quite appreciate, <laughs> That was something that was said on the 4400, and then you watch it, and it's like, how is that going to save... Yeah. Thinking about it, I forget exactly when they... 
yeah, it's not a spoiler to say someone on that show thinks it's, oh, it's going to save something. I forget exactly when they give away what it was supposed to save, so I'll just leave it at that. But, you know, you watch it, and it's like, that's not save, you know. But on this show, so far, yeah, I, you know, like, for a while, Reyna didn't feel like there was a purpose to her, but then, you know, we realized, oh, she can see the future, and it was specifically her intervention that led to Daisy realizing that Jai Ying was lying to people, you know, was killing certain people to keep a secret, that sort of thing. So, yeah, you know, it, it really does seem like everyone who's, you know, the, the, the yeah, you know, um, um, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, Mr. Hyde, you know, the Daisy's father, he wasn't inhuman, you know, the, the stuff that he was doing, that was not, he, he made his own powers, using all this weird stuff, you know, but the, the, you know, I, I don't know that I would, that I saw any, you know, divine hand behind his powers, but all of the Inhumans that we've met so far, yeah, it seemed like there was at least something that, yeah. Um, let's see, I think that covers... So the right, um, I quite appreciate. So when when Mac, you know, he spots, you know, because the door is open. It's you know, it's the door to the bathroom. They're not necessarily going to keep it closed all the time. You know, he he spots them. You know, Elena and her her cousin arguing, and then the you know she shuts the door. And the next time she opens the door to, you know, I was thinking he's definitely thought of something. You know, at first I thought that he was going to have the, the, um, the, yeah, he was just fully going to have freed himself. But he, he positioned himself so that he would be ready to kick her when she opened the door again. Very clever. And, yeah, good, you know, fight between them. And, yeah, I, I really appreciate them, you know, they never go outside of, like, what her powers, as established over the course of this episode, what they can do. You know, she's not, it, it is this, you know, within a heartbeat, however far she can, she can run. And, you know, once, I guess, by the end of the heartbeat she will return to her original position and yeah you know he he grabs this sharp little object she goes and and gets it out of his hand which of course cuts his hands because he's holding a sharp object she's pulling it away from him within less within a heartbeat yeah let's see and and also earlier you know she she takes his gun before he's able to to draw it on her and she runs over and opens the door, and then she pushes him into the, the car. Let's see. And... Yeah, so... They don't name him in this episode, so I guess I'll just keep calling him Hell Beast. But... The... the yeah. He says he's hungry. Which just, oh god, and I mean, I don't think it's human he's being served, I, I could be wrong, but it certainly is raw flesh, and he's just sitting there and gnawing on it like there's no tomorrow, it's just like, I, I suppose it's possible that, that, you know, they were like, well, if we gotta get something fast, I guess it's just gonna be raw meat, but what I worry is the case is that they like asked him what would you know you can have your favorite it's your birthday what would you like and like his answer was don't cook it you know just make sure make sure that it's I'd like it to already be dead so I don't have to struggle with it but please don't cook it whatever you serve me make sure that it is raw just like 
I really hope that they gave Brett Dalton, the actor, something... Because there is one point where he's, like, gnawing on this, like, bone, and it's like, please tell me you got him something that is not raw, and preferably, like, delicious, so that he doesn't have to... Just, yeah. Let's see. You know, like, um, on the... Ah, I can't believe I'm blanking on the name. Uh, I love the movie. Not, Night of the Living Dead. The original, um, I want to say it's like 1968. Night of the Living Dead. They did, act, you know, it looks like the, the zombies are, are eating. You know, we're, yeah, it's supposed to be like human flesh. But in reality, it was like, I, f I forget exactly what it was, but like they they made something that would actually be... Or am I thinking of a different... Okay, now I swear I won't take too long looking at it, but I'm st I just don't want to accidentally s spread misinformation. Um, yeah, here we go. Roast ham covered in chocolate sauce. Although, that's right, yeah. Roast ham and chocolate sauce is, of course, nausea-inducing, but it was at least food, you know, it wasn't, yeah, and the, you know, Keisha wants chocolate sauce to look like blood. Uh, let's see, the, and that brings us to the, yeah, I, I like the fact that both of them, let's see, yeah, you know, Mac wakes up and he's, you know, now, now he's tied to a chair instead of the, the bathroom. The chair's an upgrade. At least there's that. And Elena, in Spanish, says, I don't know what you're saying. And he responds, yeah, I don't know what you're saying in English. So, yeah, that was that was pretty funny. And, yeah, la you know, later in the episode, how did she understand what was being said to her in English? Because earlier, Joey was translating, but... Did she have the little monitor, maybe, that they have at the end of the episode? Maybe that was it. Anyway. And, and yeah, you know, he knows just a little bit of Spanish. So, you know, they, they get, they're, they're able to communicate. You know, he calls her criminal, which is pronounced very similar. You know, I, I think she said criminal. I, I, you know, it's been years since I did Spanish. Didn't do very well in it. Um... But yes, I think, you know, criminal and, you know, the, the, the word Dios, he is something he understands. And, you know, he says, I, I, pes pescados, I think, was the word for fish. And he's like, yeah, I know how to order off a menu. And, yeah, you know, I appreciate that they're able to communicate uh, a little like that. I, I really, I, I'm not a fan of media that acts as though it's impossible for people to communicate if they don't speak the exact same language. I, I acknowledge that it can be difficult. There, there needs to be some... It's, you know, if, if neither of them know a single word that's in the other person's language, then it can be extremely difficult to, at, at least verbally. But there's a lot of media that kind of acts like, well, you know, if you don't speak English, no person who speaks English is ever going to be able to communicate with you. I really hate that. It it causes a division where there really doesn't need to be one. And yeah, you know, here, instead of that, they're like, well, if you know a little bit of Spanish, you can probably communicate some stuff to a person who is speaking Spanish. And... Yeah, um... They get Werner into the machine, and he says, just kill me, over and over, which is, of course, you know, that was what Coulson said when he was being operated on, and they didn't do it, so this is, you know, it's evocative of, of that, and they do manage to, you know, I, I will say, there was like a second or two where I was like, we're not pretending that that didn't happen with Coulson also, right? Because there it was clear, like, it was an awful thing that 
they didn't, you know, ultimately, in, in the long term, the, you know, he, he recovered, but it was still really awful to, to do that to someone, but they do realize, you know, no, no, it's because he's, he's stuck, you know, mentally, he's, his brain is stuck in the moment where they were torturing him. And, let's see, then we get the, yeah, and they, they, you know, they do get some, some useful information out of him. And, uh, what does that say? Right, uh, yes, um, Lincoln manages to do electroshock therapy. I really appreciate that before he engages in it, he's like, um, I might accidentally fry his brain. Are you sure you want me to do this? And, yeah, we see that Elena's cousin is tossing the weapons into the, the water. Which, you know, that was what she was saying. We're not going to use them. So, yeah, that was a very good... I, I really appreciate... Because, yeah, like, at the start of the episode, you know, stealing weapons kind of makes you... Makes it seem like you're going to use them, but they were... You know, and, and I appreciate that, yeah, the, you know, there's this message of not judging on, you know, appearances. And the show does a good job of having these little things, you know, we, we see her draw a gun on Mac. We see her kidnap Mac, you know, who we empathize with by this point in the show. So, yeah, we're... You know, we think of her as, oh, she must be a bad guy, bad gal, but, you know, by the end, once it becomes clear, no, no, she was only intending to, to get rid of weapons, you know, you think back, oh, I mean, yeah, she didn't really do anything, you know, she accidentally cut Max's hand, but he was wielding a sharp object about to attack, like, she's thinking he's dangerous because she sees a gun and thinks, oh, dangerous you know so it's it's very clever because you know he didn't he didn't draw his gun on her but he was going around with a gun and you know looked a lot like a cop so she made a, a guess and she didn't actually hurt him any more than at all necessary and one of the the cops is a scanner cop I mean an inhuman and the the eyes very very cool just yeah and yeah you know it turns out that the the you know elena and her cousin were just fighting back against bad cops which of course the the shorthand for bad cop is cop and yeah, Mac talks about his his faith. I I do really appreciate you know Joey helping translate, and yeah, they're they're able to have a conversation. Mac and Elena and and Daisy joins in. And what on earth did I write? Oh crap. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna have to go. Yeah, I'm I'm moving on. Maybe I'll guess it later. But yeah, the the shield are able to to free Bobby and the oh right the yeah she explains about the it has to be within a heartbeat. But yeah, very cool. You know, Daisy's like throwing people around. One guy, like, gets his gun out at Daisy, and Elena, like, goes and grabs it, and uh, just, yeah, very, very cool stuff. And Coulson uses the information that Werner used, and that, that Werner, yeah, Werner, that was what Werner did, and the information that he gave, and... Yeah, he gets Gideon Malik on the phone and takes down a bunch of them by tracking. And Gideon is completely, he's not even a little bit scared. You know, just, yeah. And...
and Hydra Six in position, you know, and they just they saw the thing and and grab the the cop. You know, really really cool. By the way, really love when you know Yo. Uh, I don't know if she agrees to that name yet. That's what Mac calls her. I don't want to be disrespectful, so I'm Elena. Elena does not know that it's the eyes, so she you know she goes close and, and puts the the thing on the hand, but because his his head is is lowered just enough, the the eyes you know. If they don't call him Medusa or something similar to it, I just I'm just saying missed opportunity. And then we have the. And, you know, I will say, you know, Mac is really good at giving nicknames because Yo-Yo, you know, she goes out and she goes back. It's just, yeah. You know, it, it wouldn't make as much sense if he just called her Speedster or, I guess, Flash is probably copyrighted. But the, the I don't think I mentioned before, I, I realized he calls Daisy Tremors. I didn't pick it up right away, but in another episode, he referenced Jaws, so I think he calls her Tremors as a reference to that movie series, which I, I'm afraid I haven't watched. I will say, Alison Pregler makes them sound so much fun. Um, I just, I let's see, I think right now I don't have access to them, but I wouldn't mind, uh, let's see, so the first one... Um, okay, um, okay, there are places that have it, there aren't cur currently any places that are, that have it for free. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, after, after recording this video, I'm gonna see if there's some place where I can get all of them in, like, a package deal, so I'm not buying a bunch of, in, you know, one movie after another, one by one, but certainly, yeah, Alison Pregler makes them sound like a lot of fun, and there's a lot of crossover between her taste in at least older movies and my own older, um, ones that are not super recent. I, yeah, um, yeah, and, and Fitzsimmons talking about, you know, she, she misses him, she doesn't blame him for for Will, so they they start over and reintroduce. Very sweet. And yeah, you know, um, Coulson is is you know talking to me. He's he's upset. He's he's not happy with how he handled it. And she said, "You joined the cavalry." You know, which I really appreciate because, like, she, it's very rare for her to say the word cavalry. She usually, when others say cavalry referring to her, she hates it. So this is her being vulnerable and, and you know, trying to help him recover. Because, yeah, this is, you know, he made the dangerous, he, uh, he made the difficult call. And let's see, yeah, and and you know, I really do appreciate they let Elena actually, you know, they don't say nope, you're you're Shield now. We're gonna we're gonna stamp you property of Shield, and and that's you know, and Joey also gets to you know go back because you know he misses. He misses home, especially Sundays when his mother would cook, which that is like, yeah, um, home cooked meals by family can be such a, a positive experience. Let's see. Yes, and, and um, you know, Daisy offers Lincoln to, to go back. The APB has been lifted, you know, and... The, the, yeah, um, yeah, there's some romantic chemistry between Lincoln and Daisy again. 
and yeah, um, you know, Gideon is a little uncertain about um, Hellbeast, and then he says, "You will believe once I make a believer out of him." And you know, his like his his skin is like disintegrating or something. Just yeah really appreciate that we don't see exactly what happens there. I, I'm very excited to see what... Ah, crap. Gideon said it last episode, but I forget if it was... Was it Gaiera? Gera. I think he said Gera. The Mark Dacascus character. And <laughs> the new head of the ATCU is going to be Glenn Talbot. Which I'm really looking for. That's going to be very fun. Not for him, but maybe not even for Phil. But for the rest of us, for, for those of us watching, that's going to be very fun. I'm glad he's he's back. It's been a little, it's been a minute since we saw Glenn Talbot on the show. And that brings us to some IMDb trivia for this episode. And, ah, yes, so in the comics, she is known as Yo-Yo Rodriguez, or Slingshot. And, yeah, her first name is given as Elena. Yo-Yo part is one of Mac's many nicknames. He seems to like giving the Inhumans. And, let's see... Ah, when Bobby breaks into the Australian Delegates Hotel... Uh, wait, was that this? Australian Delegates Hotel Room? I don't remember that being in this episode. Um, I think they accidentally entered that for the wrong episode. Um, huh. After Elena's capture, Hunter is flipping through a book among her belongings. Futurism by Giovanni Lista is about the avant-garde art movement that is as much about redefining humanity in the face of emerging technology and circumstances as it is about art, which is very much what the whole Inhumans thing is. That's what that brings up. So, yeah. Oh, I didn't pick that. Wait, was that actually said in this episode. Okay, apparently Hunter called Lucio Medusa. I, I must have missed that. It's, you know, I said earlier in this episode, I hope they call that character that at some point, but yeah, it's possible that Hunter said it in this episode. And that is about it. So... Yeah, the yeah, you know, Hunter says that, you know, yeah, the it's, yeah. So before yeah, before I say the following, I will just say you know this is one aspect where the Inhumans X Men kind of thing does not work perfectly for, you know, a metaphor for LGBTQ plus people or ethnic minorities, that sort of thing, you know, because in real life they're not inherently more dangerous than people who are not part of those minorities, you know, but yeah, when, when the X-Men were originally created, part of the metaphor was just, you know, being a teenager, which, you know, when you're a teenager, it can feel like you can you can do something, you can change the world in a way that it felt like you couldn't. As a child, you have all this energy, you know, hormones and such co coursing through your body. So that could, you know, that works as a metaphor for that. But, yeah, it's not a perfect metaphor when it comes, especially here, where it's not just like, oh, you know, when you become a teenager. No, it's the 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 terogenesis can happen to people of all ages. But you know, the the 
let's see. Yeah, you know, they note that after, yeah, as they're gathering intel on Elena, they note, you know, she has no record. Mac says it doesn't add up. And Hunter says she got powers, that's how it adds up. And at Joey's and Daisy's hard looks, he responds, Andrew was a lovely head shrinker before he turned into a not so lovely and human serial killer. To which Mac says, point made. <laughs>